Hi, and uh, welcome back to the channel. Now, it's um, actually going to return to an album that I've done before. Uh, and um, if you want to check the link up here, you'll see the uh, my review of um, this. I Love Supreme by John Coltrane, the Analog Productions Ultra Tape, uh, which is, you know, one of, well, at the time of release, was perhaps one of the most um, mainstream, biggest uh, jazz titles to have come out on um, on reel to reel tape. And back then, I was comparing it against my UK original mono. Uh, now, the interesting thing here is um, obviously this is on EMI, as you can see, um, but it's uh, yeah, as I say, this is the mono. And um, you know it's 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 not in bad condition. Plays it plays fine on my mono cartridge, which obviously reduces a lot of the surface noise. But I wouldn't um, I wouldn't say this was in good enough condition to play on the stereo cartridge, particularly it, it, you know be quite a lot of pops and crackles. But it's a beautiful album, and even even in mono, it, it's sort of uh, the the sort of the the still calm the peace the meditative quality um really comes out but again the the interesting thing about this is that this is the uh emi um hmv the uk issue and the reason i say that's interesting is because on this one the tape this is what you get with your tapes by the way you get some nice fancy box Two, two reels of tape, one, me, two reels of tape, like this, one for each side of the album, um, this is their sort of copy of the original album cover, and then this very interesting booklet. Now, this is why I say that the, uh, the UK issue comes in particularly interestingly into this story because the US master, the US original master um, allegedly was damaged and so um, Analog Productions for the um, purposes of this production uh, managed to source a um, copy master from Abbey Road Studios. So this would have been made um, possibly by Rudy Van Gelder. It does actually say it's made by Rudy Van Gelder here, but I can't see anywhere on the box that says that, but uh, maybe I'm just being blind. But anyway, this tape would have been sent from Impulse over to, uh, as we see, HMV, um, HMV, which is part of the EMI group of companies, um, who, uh, you know, Abbey Road, Hayes, Middlesex, etc. This would have been cut there to produce the original record that I showed you. Now, um, that second generation master tape, which was used to make these, well, second generation production master, which was used to make these tapes, which I just put away because I'm going to get very confused in a minute. Uh, was also used, uh, I don't think we knew this at the time the tape went on sale, but it was also used, that there, to make this. Uh, so um, I believe these were, the, the, you know, the, these master copy tapes were, I believe, made by Ryan K. Smith, Certainly, this was cut by Ryan K. Smith. Um, and, and so, basically, these come from exactly the same source. And this is a one-to-one -one copy of the tape, and this is a UHQR copy of the tape. Um, so, they are as close as you're going to get vinyl and tape, really. Uh, they have exactly the same source, which is, ironically, the same source as, as is used, as I just explained for my mono original. 
And of course, in the UHPR, as you know, what you always get um, is the two discs. And I'll get into this in a moment. So two Clarity vinyl discs. Very, very lovely. I mean, they're pressed at QRP and, and on this Clarity vinyl. And I, I, I really don't have a problem with this. Uh, I'm not in the slightest. Uh, they're 45 RPM. And um, I, I, I genuinely, honestly think this is as good as vinyl gets from my experience. I haven't really heard anything better. Um, and then what you also get in here, there's some, there's some um, technical specs and an uh, advertising blurb. Um, the same very nice booklet as is in the um, tape edition. So there we go, the same booklet. And you get a really, really, really nice Stoughton printing cover. Uh, and that is nice, frankly, that really is nice. Um, I like the boxes. Sorry, that's my um, tea gritter just uh, going into shutdown. I do like these boxes, um, and but the covers are just delightful. So, you know, you have the choice whether you keep your record in the cover on your shelf or in the very fancy um, box. Of course, the, the box does take up quite a lot of um, shelf real estate. Anyway, that's the... Um, those are the three items on uh, on test today. Uh, I say three because we're including the original, as obviously I did last time, because that's my reference. But to be perfectly honest, this is between these two. The difference between either of these and the original is vast. I say the original, it's not, you know, it doesn't sound like super uber hi-fi. It's not an audiophile pressing. Um, Apart from anything else, it's mono. But what you do get with the original is you get all the sense of the spirituality, if you like, and the calm, meditative, peaceful state of the original recording. What you get on the UHQR is um, it's in another world of resolution, absolutely in another world. Um, there's that sort of as the, as the um, you get this sort of introduction and there's this sort of a beautiful kind of um, swooshing symbols on the right hand channel and, and the sax on the left, and then the sort of piano um, kicks in um, centrally and, and and quite far back in the bass as well, and the um, and then the drums sort of kick in again on the on the right. And there's kind of a sort of a little sort of shuffly, sambery kind of uh, Latin sort of feel to the rhythm. And um, it's really, really, really impressive. Uh, and you hear that so, so, so well, so, so, so much better. Um, the sax sits really quite forward on the left channel. Um, and the whole thing is just, it is absolutely beautiful and absolutely captivating. Um, now, you know, cut to the chase of, yeah, yes, the tape sounds better. Of course, it sounds better. And as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm actually playing it back on a Studio A80 master recorder, which was um, ultimately purchased from EMI Hayes Middlesex, which will be where, you know, the master tapes for this were sent. And, and uh, the A80 actually um, is f four years too young to have been involved in the production of this album. But, um, you know, that that's what my machine's job would have been doing. So I'm playing back a kind of a, a, a master, copy master, however many generations, second generation, um, on a master recorder. And I'm expecting vinyl to stand up against it. And this is where the real interest of this is, because... Um, you know, clearly the vinyl isn't as good, but it's close. It really is close. I I wouldn't, I mean, numbers, people are always asking me to put numbers on things. Um, 
you've got to say the tape is 100%. Uh, you know, you're not going to beat that. The only way you could beat that is to either have that exact safety production master, rather, that, um, you know, was, was sourced from Abbey Road, or the original from which that was made, which I understand is damaged now. So that's the only way you're ever going to improve upon this tape, I believe. Um, this gets close. I mean, I, I, I will tell you where it, da it differs and where it lacks in comparison, because that's kind of the only meaningful thing to say. And, and when you put the tape on after playing the UHQR, there is a slightly more realistic sense of, well, there's, there is a tangibly more realistic sense of space. The piano is much more firmly rooted centrally at the back of the hall. Um, the bass is more firmly rooted in space. That drum rhythm, the sort of the sambury kind of the, the, the shuffle um, and the spaces between the, the, the drum hits, the spaces between the bass plucking, the spaces between the saxophone notes, all that kind of things. It's just better. Um, on on the um, on the UHQ on the on the ultra tape, sorry. Um, so it's sort of you know that that whole kind of rooted in space, and then the timing that the sense of timing, and then the 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 timbral thing. I mean the UHQR, I would say, ever so ever so ever so slightly, the sax can just sort of sound a little bit shouty. Could be my turntable setup, to be perfectly honest. Could be that I need to give it another clean on the D gritter for any of you who've been watching my recent videos. Um, but on the tape, it just sounds more reedy, more real and less shouty. And that's, you know, that is a fundamental kind of thing of tape. It just sounds right because it kind of is right. It is the source for this. So how can it not sound better? Um, but it's small. And um, putting numbers on it, I would like... To, I. I'd say if the tape was 100 and this was 60%, I'd have to say that the UHQR was 90%. So it's a lot, lot, lot closer to the sound of the tape than it is to the sound of the um, original. Now, I don't have a mint stereo original of course, um, but I just wanted to try to, you know, impress upon you that this is, you know, for everyone who doesn't have the ability to play tapes, or even if you do have a tape recorder, you know, this requires a two-track CCIR, um, fifty-nine percent uh, inches per second, reel-to-reel -reel player. Uh, then this is really good. That's, I just want to try and get an idea of what I'm comparing. So if you've got, you know, a really decent sort of, let's say, £100,000 turntable front end, and you've got a consumer reel-to-reel, -reel, like an Akai or a Technics or a Sony or something like that, um, I think the gap would be notably smaller. You might actually find it was pretty, pretty close. I would I would hazard a guess that that would be the case. I could play the tape on my Technics um, and see how that fared, uh, but the Technics is um, NAB EQ only, so that wouldn't really work. But I, I I think, you know, to most people, the gap is quite close, um, and you know, this well in the UK here this this uh, I got this from um, David Brook at uh, Brook Audio, The Vinyl Adventure. Uh, and I think he sells these for £200. Um, the tape is $600, direct from Acoustic Sounds, but by the time you've paid VAT, shipping, duty, I reckon it's more like £750, £800. So, um, you know, this is a quarter of the price. Um, and, you know, most of you will be able to play it. This is four times the price and most of you won't be able to play it. Is this better? Yes. Very obviously, very clearly, but not by a large amount. And, and you know, therefore I would say this is 
Um, it's um, it's a beautiful thing and, and, and worth every penny, really worth every penny. Um, I would like to just, uh, before sort of wrapping up and closing, I would like to thank one of my um, regular viewers, Austin Hunt, uh, who did offer to send me his copy of uh, Love Supreme UHQR so that I could do a comparison to the tape. But uh, thanks for the offer, Austin. But as you see, I, uh, I caved in and, and bought one anyway, well, as well as a stack of other records. All this has rather gone on hold while I've been listening to Muse, mostly for the last few weeks, as, as you'll all know. Anyway, um, just to wrap up, uh, the, the Love Supreme UHQR, yeah, it is absolutely stunning. You know, it's not as good as the Ultra Tape, of course not, but it is absolutely stunning. And, um, you know, just, uh, I mean, I'm sure all of you will have also seen the most recent announcement is the White Stripes Elephant. Again, an album I've done a previous review on, which you can see if you go up here. But, um, yeah, that's my favourite White Stripe album. White Stripes album. Um, you know, I never saw the White Stripes live. I did, I've seen Jack White twice. Um, absolutely loved Elephant. And, um, uh, I couldn't resist so i've you know i've got both the uhqr and the ultra tape of that coming and um yeah i can't resist absolutely can't resist so uh yeah i hope you found that useful and interesting and um if you are interested in um john coltrane or love supreme or you know even if you don't particularly know it i mean i, I do have a listen on spotify or something it's such a kind of um meditative um kind of purifying peaceful intimate beautiful piece of music um and uh you know some of the sides are only seven minutes long which is um you know i kind of wonder i do wonder whether they could have done this at 45 rpm and still fitted it on one lp Maybe they could have done, but some sacrificed the quality. I don't know. It's uh, this whole um, 45 RPM double LP thing is uh, something I kind of struggle with. I, I fully appreciate the sound quality benefits of it, but um, seeing the, the latest Atlantic 75 issues, I'm going to buy some of them. I'll probably buy quite a lot of them, to be perfectly honest. Um, In Excess Kick really intrigues me because what a phenomenal album um, of its era. And then, as many of you will know, Genesis, yes, Crosby, Stills and Nash, you know, David Crosby on his own, obviously. Um, many of these absolute, you know, core to my favourites, um, bands and artists. But um, I don't want to be changing Foxtrot halfway, uh, sorry, I don't want to be changing Supper's Ready halfway through the track. I don't want to be changing Close to the Edge halfway through the track. Um, I don't want to be listening to a lamb lies down on broadway over eight sides uh i wish that they were doing you know clarity vinyl qrp pressed bernie or kevin or ryan mastered and cut um 33 rpm versions of these i would i would buy probably 50 of them uh, as it is i might get 10 or so again out of interest and, and it, it, it's um even if i prefer the sound of the 45 rpm ones i'll probably play my 33 rpm originals um you know when i want to listen to the music because uh to me an lp side is um it's a it's a kind of a, it's a piece of artwork you know it's a it's a format of a piece of art and i don't like um cutting them in half anyway I've waffled on enough. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for listening to the end, if you're still here. And uh, I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.